Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin, utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. What's going on, APA? Welcome to London night, late night London session. We got 130 people on a call and rising. Good deal, good deal, good deal. All right, yeah, you guys are on with uh, Nathan Williams and Calvin Frazier. We are your panelists, your hosts for tonight. Uh, the goal of live sessions. So let me, before we just start, let me go ahead. All right, guys, I'm going to make sure we are now streaming live. If you guys are in the channels uh, or on the Facebook groups that are being streamed live too, uh, go ahead and start a watch party and let's get this, uh, let's get this out to everybody. Let them know what we're doing. All right, hoping the market is kind to us so we can actually start getting some pips. Market been trashed the last But hey, that's trading. So uh, we're going to start off as always with a disclaimer. <laughs> trading foreign exchange currency is a risk. All right. It is a risk. There are no guarantees. Past results are not indicative of future results. All right. Myself, nor Calvin, nor Avoya Prom, or any other educators, we are not uh, financial advisors. Uh, we are financial educators in the area of the foreign exchange market. All right. Uh, this live session is to continue to educate you guys on how to utilize uh, the Aero software uh, and do it in a live environment so that you can understand and see how it works live instead of watching the videos of me just showing you what things look like in the past. All right. Um, there are also New York session. So as of right now, we've got 18 hours going. Uh, so right now, starting this week, uh, I'm doing nine hours and Dante Lewis is doing nine hours of New York session. All right, so everybody in the groups, you know, if you uh, get sleepy and you fall asleep, you can always tune in uh, later in, uh, this morning uh, with uh, Dante Lewis on the New York session uh, and with the opportunity to catch pips. All right. So with that out of the way, the rules as always, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A. All right, me and my, uh, myself or Calvin will we'll answer those questions for you guys. Make sure you guys get all the answers you need. All right. Um, and in the meantime, let's try to have some fun. So I'm gonna do a quick scan of the market. Let's go ahead and pull up the chart. We're gonna check it out. All right, we're gonna start off with the pound pairs. GBPD still in the uptrend. Still in the uptrend. It's ranging right now, all right? The closer these zones are together, the more constricted the price is, that's just ranging, all right? So now what you're waiting for is a breakout. If you see this, it's not a very good look. So what you do is you just go to another pair, all right? GBPAUD has been falling ever since uh, the end of the day. So on the, this, this dotted line here, this is the period separate, starts the new Forex day. So at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time is when uh, price hits this line, every day at 4 p.m. Central Standard. So since then, the market has been falling for GBPAUD since then. Uh, it's still an uptrend, so I like this. I'm looking for a bounce, hopefully, in London session here uh, for a buy for us to head take this back up. GBP, JPY, just ranging, still an uptrend. GBP, CHF, ranging, still an uptrend. GBP, CAD, nice little drop in New York session. Big drop, actually, I'm sorry, New York session. Uh, it's just kind of ranging right now. It's still an uptrend. And if you can see here, you can see here, nice little W formation. Leg one, leg two, leg three. I'd love to see this thing go back up here for fourth leg of the W, all right? GBP, NZD, nice little fall, all right? Same thing, leg one, two, three. Let us see it back up. 
EURAUD, still in a significant downtrend, just falling off a cliff. EURGBP, still in a downtrend. I'm liking this setup. Uh, I'm looking for it to bounce off this zone here for a bag entry heading down. That'd be a nice little sale right there. See what kind of space we have in between these zones. At about 23, almost 24 pips. Be a nice little trade right there. EURJPY, just playing around, still on a downtrend, kind of ranging right now, price all over the place. And Euro NZD, downtrend, but it's it's already taking a fall. All right. So we're gonna go recap some trades yesterday. For those of you guys got on New York session, might have missed the trades. Uh strategy number six came into play uh with a few pairs in New York session. So if you guys remember strategy number six, that is the counter trend strategy. You can see it here. This is GBP JPY. What time was this candle? This candle at 1630. 1630, so you had a bag entry in the opposite of the trend. You see, as we know, the trend is up by zooming all the way out. See, we have more green than red, so we know we're in an uptrend. We know we're in an uptrend. However, you know, this morning at the 1630 hour, you got a bag entry, bounce, arrow, boom. You got in, that thing dropped. 25 pips. That's like strategy number six playing out right there. The information leading right into the what? Into the counter trend trade. This is why it's important, guys, to watch all the videos and familiarize yourself. This is that information, great information planted on the, uh, uh, it's a beautiful image, actually. Look at that. See that from a trend line standpoint, like I teach in the video? The M is slanted down, so you know it's a, uh, you know, you're definitely looking for that sale entry. Now all you're doing is for waiting for it to break uh, the neckline right here, which it did, close below my neckline. You could have had an entry here when it broke the neckline on this counter here and closed below it. And then you could have had another entry here with the bag entry. We already know the bag entry dropped 25 pips. And then the M formation entry, it dropped an, its own, you know, 33 pips. So opportunity, you could have caught a good 40 pips you know, as I teach 20 pip take profit, very little drawdown, very little drawdown, guys, very little drawdown. On that first entry, you would have had a drawdown of seven pips. And then on a bag entry, you would have had a drawdown of five pips. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right. So that counter trend trade, New York session, great trade right there. Uh, we got another one. Let's see. It's G Chef. G Chef. What time was this candle? This was at the 16.10. No, I'm on a five minute. Let me go to 15 minute. Uh, 15 minute. And we just got a, we just got a alert. GBP AUD. Let's go take a look at it. GBP go right into it now. So we're not, we're not touching that one, guys. Uh, again, we're in an uptrend, so we're looking for buys only for strategy one, uh, and we have an arrow into the actual zone. Uh, we're well, not into the zone, but right at the zone. So yeah, I wouldn't be, I won't be touching that trade. All right. But just go back to the G Chef, G Chef. What time is that? On the 15 minute, you had this trade at 16:45. Uh, too close to the zone. So counter trend trade, same thing, information. And you could have took that information, like I said, plant it off of this resistance, leaning down. As you can see that, entry would have been right here once this candle closed. So you'd entered in actually on this candle right here. It was like it, the price gapped up a little bit. You had entered in right here on the start of this red candle right here retrace less than four pips and it dropped you know oh 29.5 caught 30 pips to the zone so you got your 20 pips so it makes makes uh you know it pays to actually go and you know learn the different strategies you know again the market is going to give you what it gives you the strategies that we teach and again there's seven strategies i just got done with strategy number eight Strategy number eight is another strategy you can utilize, uh, but the strategies are built to help you 
make profit or potentially catch pips, no matter what's going on in the market. If the market doesn't give you one look, it may give you another look. So as you guys learn, you know, again, I, I caution everybody or, or uh, I would challenge everybody to learn two to three strategies and, and master just those two or three so that you always have something different, you know, in your back pocket to use. So if you don't get strategy one, then you might use strategy three or you might use strategy, you know, uh, six, you know, who knows what are strategy are you looking for? Uh, that is, uh, that's that. So I just recorded strategy number eight. I might show it to you guys tonight before it comes out tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see. GCAD, huge drop in New York, but no arrows. All right. GBP, NZD. Lucky you had the counter trend trade doing New York session as well. Let's see what time that candle is at. That candle is at 1800. Nope, it's outside of the parameters. 1500 to 1700 is the two hour time frame that you want to look at. This candle came at the 1800 hour, so it wouldn't count. Uh, you wouldn't have taken that trade. But there again, a couple of great trades, you know, with uh, GBP CHF and GBP JPY with the M formation catching that trade and the counter trend trade. So you could have had, you know, 80 good pips there, 20 pips each, two different types of strategies. And again, it pays to go and look at these additional, the additional strategies. Uh, GBP USD did something similar. Look at this information off of the, off the resistance. I don't like that information though. Uh, Cause you see here that the second high is higher than the first high. As you know, you always want to look for the first high to be the highest and the second high to be the lowest. And it's leaning down for sale because the information, you know, you're looking for a sale. All right. But you did, you know, so I wouldn't, uh, I don't, I don't like that one there. Just kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at. As you can see here, the second high is higher than the first high. Slanted up. That's not what you want. You want to see it slanted the other way. All right. Pull a couple extra pairs here. See if we can't get some love tonight. Uh, let's see here. I don't know, Kevin. What you wanna look at, man? What you wanna look at? Let me see. Let me see if we got any. If we got any questions in the Q and A box? Still waiting for these GBP moves. Yeah, man. Is it possible to run up a ten dollar trading account using Arrow? How much would you suggest to start trading? Uh, so ten dollars is gonna be tight. Uh, if you're gonna use a ten dollar account. Uh, definitely, you know, all you can really use is a 0 0.01, but you know, I would recommend uh, personally having at least a minimum of $100 uh, with using the eyes in a 0, 0.01 lot size. Uh, you have to lose 1,000 pips utilizing a 0 0.01 lot size before your whole $100 is gone. So I'd recommend at least $100. Uh, and, you know, my frat brother has been in the group for the last three days showing you guys every day he's making over $100. He's taking a $100 account. He turns it into 250, 280. Uh, he withdraws the profits, starts all over again. He's done it, I think, three days now in a row, two days in a row. I'm taking that hundred dollar account up to a hundred, you know, up to 250, 286. Uh, I posted his results again on my Instagram today. Uh, so it, it's doable, guys. And he's only trading strategy number one. That's it. Strategy number one, the bag strategy. All right. Uh, Douglas said his. Broker has GBP AUD as even zones. Again, it's going to happen with the different brokers. Uh, they're going to have different price points, which is going to have going to show different, you know, uh, different zones and potentially different arrows at different times as well. All right, it's all based off of price. So the zones and the arrows are all based off of price. All right, whatever price does. So if your broker has a different price, then a different broker is going to show differently potentially. All right. Your ad is at a short money zone breakout. Let's go take a look at it. Your ad, money zone breakout. Let's go take a look. E-U-R-A-U-D. So E-U-R-A-U-D. All right, yeah, definitely money zone breakout. However, what I don't like about it is that we're almost 50 pips away from the previous uh, previous money zone. Uh, and so I don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable hitting, you know, taking that for 20 pips 
uh, that far away. Why? Well, you, let's go look at the, let's go look at it, guys. Let's go measure it. Here's how you want to measure potential ADR. So uh, I'm look, thinking about adding a, uh, you know, a ADR uh, indicator or at least a tool that shows ADR on the, on the chart uh, for Arrow. Uh, but all the 10 pairs I recommend all have ADRs of 80 pips or more. All right. So what that tells you is it gives you an indication of how many pips a currency pair moves per day on average over a certain amount of time frame. The average time frame that most people look at for ADR is at least a 10, 10 day period. That's two weeks. All right. Uh, and so if you measure this here, you see the high of the day was here, this week here, and then the low is where we're at now. So far, EUR, AUD has moved 67 pips. So the majority of its ADR has already happened. Uh, therefore, I wouldn't look to be trading this pair you know, for, for a sale because it's moved the majority of its ADR. When it's moved the majority of its ADR, then the probability of it moving in your favor 20 pips or more is highly unlikely, all right? The probability goes down. Remember, we're in the game. We're not in the 50-50 game. We're in the high probability game, all right? Uh, before we even jump into this anymore, let me go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll talk about it. I'm going to look at the news. Who's looked at the news today? We talked about it yesterday. Who looked at the news? What news do we have tonight? Uh, like we talked about yesterday, for those who weren't on last night, uh, my FX book, the app, and then if you go to www.forexfactory.com, those two, you know, that, uh, that website there also has economic news for foreign exchange currency pairs. Uh, you don't want to trade when you see yellow or red folder news, so medium or high. Low is okay, doesn't really affect much, but when you have the yellow folder or red folder, I would not be looking to trade that currency pair you know, within 30 minutes to an hour of that currency pair uh, of, of the news. So as I look here, we got a lot of green news tonight. We don't have any red news until the morning. So in seven hours and five minutes, so pretty much at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, so Pretty much New York session. Uh, we've got some USD news, initial jobless claims, uh, and the initial jobless claim is four weeks average. So big news in USD at 7:30. But other than that, tonight, man, we're we look like we're clear. Euro's got a lot of in about an hour and a half. It's got a lot of uh, green photo news, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, so cool. News looks uh, low tonight. I like low news. That means the market's going to move the way it should move. Um, this is the reason why, you know, uh, typically you see people making very good, uh, catching very good pips on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, just because there's very little news on Mondays and Tuesdays. Most of the economic news starts to pick up on Wednesdays. So Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, uh, just for you guys are the days you typically have some of the higher news days. All right. Oil. Somebody wants to look at oil. Let's go take a look at oil. First time somebody asked about that. Let's go look at oil. So oil there is under energy. It's going to be U.S. oil. It's going to be U.S. oil. Typically, U.S. oil is a uh, New York session pair. So you're going to trade it during the New York session. It's called U.S. oil. So it moves during New York. All right, it's an uptrend, so New York session, you get your bag entry, like a good move there, looks like a good move, looks like a good move there. You can see here, there's been some nice moves. Uh, look at that, New York session two days ago, nice move, entry there, and it's ran up since then. You know, it's over 120, 190 pips, last day and a half, all right. So uh, definitely, definitely, like I said, it's a New York mover. Look at that, New York session, big drop, big movement in New York. Kind of slow in London, it'll move a little bit, but the big moves come in New York because, again, it's U.S. oil, all right? Trading the right pairs at the right time will also aid you in being more consistent, all right? Even if you miss a move, I think, matter of fact, I'll show you guys. We missed a move last night, and I'm not, I'm not crying about it. It happens. So EUR, USD, somebody called it out. It is a New York session pair. And 
Had we took that trade last night when somebody called it out, we would have made money. You see there? That was at the beginning of the session, a couple hours in right there. Uh, this was at, what time was that? 10, 15, so that'd have been at about 2.15 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we'd have got in, we'd have had our 20 pips in, It took us about seven candles, so an hour and 45 minutes. So pretty much we'd had to go to sleep, but we'd caught our 20 pips. But I'm not, I'm fine missing that trade. Now, why am I fine missing that trade? Because this is a New York session pair, all right? Um, so that's just my style of trading, guys. You know, I, I like to trade the pairs that move during the session they move in. And if I miss moves, I just miss moves. There's always going to be another setup, all right? Always going to be another setup. Never be scared to miss a trade do not chase trades there's gonna always be another setup depending on the strategies you use and again if you have multiple strategies you know hey you have opportunity to catch moves regardless See if we got any more questions. Correct. You want to? Uh, so someone asked about Forex Factory. Uh, avoid the red, orange, and yellow photos. Anything that's medium or high, medium, high. All right, medium or high. You want to avoid those. All right, SPX and US 30, guys. I'm getting questions about that. Those are US session pairs. We can go look at them, but again, these are pairs that move during New York session. Uh, when they're moving, because again, the US 30 and S&P 500, these are what? These are US indices. These indices are just a collection of stocks. All right, collection of stocks. So we're in an uptrend. Five minute time frame, SPX 500. We've got an entry, got an entry or had an entry two candles ago and you see it's already heading down. Let's see here from that entry here. For me, I would, even during New York session, I wouldn't have took it. It's less than 50 pips away. All right, so I look for 50 pips. Uh, I look for 50 pips on uh, or more on indices. All right, so I wouldn't have took this because it's less than 50 pips away. All right, let's pull up US 30. Uh, and so for everybody that, that likes the indices, I am going to be working with, uh, we've got two uh, educators that they, these ladies have been killing the indices. Uh, they trade indices and they utilize FIBS. And they, um, I sh we're working on how to bring them on board, May, you know, have them uh, get on with Dante that way, you know, you get a combination of indices and forex pairs, you know, during New York session, uh, and then during London session, we just concentrate on the London session pairs. All right, so uh, for everybody that's been asking, um, I might even pop on and help out with gold because I know those ladies they don't really trade gold; they just trade the indices. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't see any move on US thirty, but I wouldn't be looking to take these trades anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we're looking to bring that value to you guys. Uh, this year, the game plan is to roll out uh calls you know these additional live trainings where there's information uh being given out on um how to trade the indices how to trade gold uh, i've got somebody right now he's per perfecting his strategy been doing very well and looking to get him start bringing him on board fridays like friday nights and saturdays uh to trade cryptocurrency uh and you know he, he, he does a lot of ethereum i want to find somebody that does bitcoin uh, and maybe even some Litecoin, but at least at least one or two traders, you know, to start coming on board and start giving you guys additional value so you can get that training ongoing. Again, like we, like we talked about it yesterday, 100 hours of live training and live trading. Um, so look for that to come. All right, pip counter. Don't worry about the pip counter. Next update will fix that. So uh, right now, do not worry about pip counter uh, until the next update. Next update. Uh, 
I'm going to, I push back the next update until next weekend, uh, because this weekend we're getting an update with the uh, VPS. So everyone, we're, we're, you know, everybody's VPS is going to be upgraded to have uh, higher specs. So it's a lot more powerful VPS. Uh, and so I did not want to have a software rollout the same week as a VPS rollout, you know, just in case there's some issues. So this year, so I pushed the arrow um, update till next week. All right. So next week we'll talk more about. Uh, well, I mean, next week we'll we'll have the uh, next weekend we'll have the uh, the arrow version three, um, you know, update. All right. Next weekend. Uh, this weekend the VPS is being updated, which is great because you know, as you guys know, the VPS has been lagging. We've been having some issues. So you know, having that update should be great. I want to see how it works next week. Uh, you know, and then next week, uh, next weekend we'll we'll, we'll do the, the V three update for arrow. All right. Let me go check the chat. Uh, remember, guys, if you are asking questions, make sure to ask the questions in the Q and A box. All right, in the Q and A box. Um, yeah, somebody asked me, how do you check, uh, to check ATR or ADR, you know, you have to have, you know, it's usually easy to ha have a tool, but all you want to do is you want to measure from the top, the highest price of the day to the lowest price of the day. And that, you know, that's all, that's all ATR is or ADR, you know, they're both the same average true range, ATR, average daily range, ADR, they mean the same thing. Um, and what they do, they just measure the average movement per day. That gives you a probability that it, you know if a if a pair on average moves 100 pips a day, and by the time you get to the chart, it's already moved 78. It's not a very high probability that you're gonna you're gonna get the opportunity to uh, to catch any pips, uh, significant pips, just because it's moved the majority of its ADR. All right, so all that is just an indicator to let you know uh, probability. So we have live sessions. Uh, right now, uh, I'm doing live sessions in London session from 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 3 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then Dante Lewis is doing them from uh, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so we're working on getting more hours. Uh, we'll let you guys know when that comes. All right. I don't really see too many more questions. On AUD NZD, how would you know if price could possibly go through the red zone? You don't. You just wait for it to either go through or to bounce off. Uh, so we don't predict here, guys. We trade what we see. Um, you know, so it's all about trading what you see and being consistent with a certain strategy that you use. So whatever strategy that you guys like, uh, you know, continue to um, Continue to you know perfect those strategies, test them out on a demo account. Then when you get good, move to a, a live account. All right, move to a live account. All right. What's coming in version three? Uh, so version three, uh, I'll show you. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Let's pop it up here. So version three, I have uh, optimized the software so that it it runs. Uh, it's not as uh, dependent on memory. That way, it should not lag. Uh, as much uh, the, the VPS as you, you know, trade it on multiple pairs. Uh, the pip counter is going to be on the left side now. That way everyone can see it. Uh, again, my computer and many others shows correctly. Uh, however, uh, not everyone does. So I want to move the pip counter back over here to the left side of the screen. That way it's going to always be in the same place for everyone. Um, that's it. Those are the only two changes. Nothing, nothing major. Uh, I may add the uh, the ATR or ADR. I may add that now that we have an extra week. Uh, we'll see. But those are the only two changes that I have already made. Um, and uh, yep, we're waiting on. That's what we're waiting on.
Yeah, so unless the news comes out, I am expecting the pound pairs to start reversing. Uh, they are at the end of their market maker cycle. Um, strategy number nine, we'll talk about market maker cycle. Um, but yes, I'm expecting the pound pairs to start selling off, just looking at them potentially. Once you guys get that, that training and understand the cycle of the market, you guys will be ready. I mean, you'll, you'll be ready to start taking counter trend trades once you understand the, the cycle of the market, all right? Nothing really here right now. So CHFs are very good movers during London session. So I'm going to add, oh, where is that? I don't have it. Let's go. Let's go add it. CHF JPY. We'll add that one there. CHF, JPY is in a downtrend, four red zones, two green. All right. All right, nothing really moving right now here. But yeah, so guys, uh, you know, uh, some changes coming to uh, the live trade sessions. Again, we're looking at making a um, uh, change with Dante uh, by adding, you know, two, uh, uh, lady traders with him so it'll be like a panel there'll be three of them uh and they'll be looking to trade indices and for uh, forex pairs at the same time during new york session all right uh dante trades a lot of new york session pairs um also again if we don't have a move during london session there's a good chance that you might be able to catch moves during new york session counter trend trades so make sure you have to go and watch strategy number six um and then also some of those New York, those New York session pairs move. The indices always move. Um, and so these ladies can really trade. You know, uh, they they make, you know, I've seen both of them make five figures in a week. Uh, same, you know, together, uh, you know, on some of these indices. So, you know, look for that to happen. Uh, and then for those of you, you know, that are, are um, you know, doing really well with Arrow, uh, really want to teach, hey, hit me up. You know, if you're looking at being, a, you want to be an educator, you know, I'm looking for some more educators. I need some that want to be on with me here during London session uh, so that we can have a panel and kind of bounce ideas off each other. Uh, my style is different than others. Uh, but, you know, it may always makes for better better uh, trade to have companies. So every time Calvin's on with me, I, I appreciate that because uh, uh, it can't get boring up here by yourself. Plus, it's just one type of strategy. So we'd like to have that. So if you, if you guys are interested in, in wanting to be educators, you know, hit me up. Um, I've got some other educators I'm, 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 I'm bringing on as well, uh, and we're going to get there. We've got uh, some big names now. You know, I said Arrow is starting to make a little noise. we got some big names that are really respected in the Forex market uh, as great traders, you know, uh, million dollar traders that will be coming to, uh, you know, coming to, um, to, to Avoid Prime really soon. Uh, and they'll be joining us on these, on these sessions as well. Um, what else? Um, Got some other stuff working on, but I'm gonna keep it to myself right now. Uh, if you're in Atlanta, I'll be in Atlanta this weekend for the Impact uh, Super Saturday. So I'll see you guys on this weekend. Uh, you guys get to hear all the juicy stuff that's coming out uh, and that's coming to next. I've been working late nights, uh, be working late nights uh, on, on watching some new stuff coming out. So you guys in Atlanta will get the first, first to hear this stuff that's coming. Check the chat here. Go to Q and A, Q and A box. Uh, someone asked if I use the current the currency strength meter. I do not use the currency strength meter. Uh, reason being is my strategy is a momentum uh, strategy. You know everything that's built into it. So if I don't use it. Uh, that's just me though. I like to trade the chart. I don't like indicators that tell me.
the strength or this, that, and the other. I uh, just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't really help me in my trading experience. Uh, everyone keeps asking about. I got a couple of questions here about the automated version. It's gonna come when it comes, guys. You know, even when it's done, it's not done yet. But even when it's done, it still has to go through ninety days of uh, testing with the Voya Prime. So I'm expecting you to be out sometime late spring, early summer. All right. In the meantime, enjoy Arrow as is. And learn. Uh, you know, I, I believe EAs are powerful, but if you don't understand what's going on, then you know it's not going to be as valuable to you. By just pushing a button, turning it on, and going to sleep all day, every day. All right, uh, that's just my opinion. So you know, definitely, you know, le definitely learn and, and take in all you can uh, with Arrow. Uh, with the automated version, I'm looking to have that, and that will only trade strategy one right now. Uh, I've got. A, I, I'm our future versions will have additional um, additional. What do you call it? It'll have additional. Uh, strategies that it will trade but right now it's just gonna start off trading strategy one live sessions are always recorded and they're always placed into the uh the next day they're always placed into the uh arrow announcements channel USDCHF. Let's go take a look at it. USDCHF. All right. This is a London slash New York pair uh, because CHF is a London pair currency and USD, of course, is a USD, a New York session pair. So, but we'll take a look at it. USDCHF. USDCHF. It's an uptrend. So I'm not taking that trade because we're an uptrend. So uh, I wouldn't take the down arrow because we have one, two, three, red, one, two, three, four, five, green, we're in an uptrend. So I wouldn't be looking to trade a sale. All right, that's just me though. All right, looks like we got a Euro GBP buy. Euro GBP buy. I'm probably not going to take it because I know that the Euros have been in the, yep, the Euros have been in downtrend. So after a while, you got to get used to this. You'll see. You look at your phone, look at it, and you'll know, oh, euros have been in a downtrend so for weeks. So I'm not looking for a buy. So uh, I wouldn't be looking to take that trade. So GBPAUD, you guys see here, before the money zone, we already had two down arrows, all right? So I'm gonna go to the minute five and see if we can't catch any buy arrows. As we know, the trend, the overall trend is an uptrend, all right? Zoom out all the way, you can see more green than red. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for buy. All right, so I'm gonna go to the minute five for buy. So because we already had the two arrows in the trend there. GJ, G Chef, G Chef. 
Looking for GCF to bounce off and head up. I'd love to see that. GCAD. Yeah, same thing with GCAD. TBP NZD. TBP NZD. It's trying to turn up. I'm going to go to five minutes for that too. Uh, GP NZD, I wouldn't even be touching it. Never did bounce. We didn't get a bounce. I'm going to go to 15 minutes. Did we get a bounce on the 15? We got a bounce on the 15, but not on the five. All right, we'll stay on the 15. All right. Strategy number three is not looking too good, guys. Strategy number three not looking good. GP NZD, you can see the range. Asia, Asia Channel, 65 pips. GCAD, the range. Let's zoom in. The GCAD range is 35. So if we can get a break above this zone and above boom, that line, I'm in for a buy on the uh, Asia breakout. All right, I'm in for a buy on the Asia breakout because we're in the uptrend. So we're looking for a breakout to the upside. All right, looking for a breakout to the upside. GBPCHF, very tight range, about 17 pips, same thing here, break above that line right there, we're good, GBPJPY, it's out of zone, so I don't really care what's going on, GJ, I'm just gonna, we're at a zone right now, so it's just sitting there, GBPAUD, We're in the uptrend, but GBP AUD strategy three is definitely out of the picture. That range is 71 pips, all right, 71 pips. So the only thing I'd be looking for would be a bag entry. GBP USD, it's just ranging right now. So I'm not really looking at GBP USD to do, too, do too much of anything. All right, I'm not really looking for to do too much of anything. Euro AUD, as I was telling you guys, for those that, that talked about it, you know, hey, taking that trade because yes, the first candle inside the money zone is below. Uh, it's valid based on the rules. And I guess I'll, I'll go back and update, but for me, it's beyond the ADR, you know, half, over half the ADR. So I, I wouldn't take that trade over 40 pips distance. And you can clearly see it's already heading back up. It's already up seven, eight pips now. So you'd be in some, some drawdown right now. Uh, and again, you may want to trade, uh, but that's a, uh, it's too wide of a gap right there, guys. All because of ADR, ADR, ATR, whatever you go by. EUR, GBP, strategy number nine playing, playing out. Now we're looking for a sale. So wait for this thing to come back down here at price and it gives a sale. See what kind of move we got. We got how much room we got? Oh, 22 pips. By the time it comes down here, it may be less than 20 pips. Might be less than 20 pips. We might be able to get in and grab 10 pips. Uh, we'll see. Your JPY is doing much of nothing right now. And Euro NZD. Not much. We'll go back here and answer some questions here. GK, we talked about that already. Uh, again, uh, my schedule for live trading right now is uh, three days a week, which are, you know, would be, I guess you say Monday, I mean, Wednesday morning at 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., Thursday morning, and then Friday morning. All right. NZD CAD H1. I don't trade the higher time frames, but we can look at it. Uh, someone wants to look at NZD CAD H1. I don't, I don't intraday trade or swing trade. That's not my strategy. Uh, I have no patience for it. Uh, and then NZD CAD is not even a pair I trade, so I need to add that real quick. 
and ZDCAD, close. H1, we'll look at it. So NZD CAD is in a downtrend. So um, if you were in a trade, you should have been in this one right here. You've been in this sale. It's in a downtrend. And this trade right here, yesterday, you would have hit 37 pips, uh, which is not bad. Not bad at all. All right. With H1, you typically want to look for 50 pip trades. Uh, NZD CAD, though, is not a high ADR pair. Um, so, you know, you might cut that in half and just go for 25, just because it's not a high ADR pair. All right, but right now, and from an NZD CAD standpoint, it's in a downtrend, but I don't see an entry at, at the moment. So I'm not looking to, it's in a current retrace right now. I'm not looking to do anything with this, regardless of, of uh, what's going on. Uh, 15 minute time frame. Yeah, I'm not looking to do anything. Some users have asked about a counter timer. Uh, that is correct. So I've had people ask about that. No one has, I'm not gonna add a counter timer at this point. Uh, there is no true value in a counter timer. Um, the arrows will give you an indication of, of what, of when there's opportunity to uh, look for a buy or sell entry. Uh, and then if you're trading a different strategy, those are the different strategies, you know, you should be just around the chart. So I, I don't see value in a counter timer. Um, so if somebody can actually send me a message and actually help me understand the value of a counter timer and change my mind, maybe I'll add it. But at this point, uh, I don't see any value in a counter timer. It's just a cute little toy on your, on your, uh, on your chart. Um, uh, I like to keep my charts clean. And if I add anything to it, I want it to be a value, um, you know, for myself or, and for anybody else using, utilizing the software. Someone wants to look at gold. Gold is a pair you trade during New York session. So again, we can look at these guys, but again, looking at these does not make any sense at this point because it is a uh, New York session pair, guys. Same thing with the indices. I'm definitely expecting GBP Chef to reverse and go up. Okay, okay. Gold is in a well, even trend. You got two red, two green, so you can trade it either way. Uh, you had a bounce. It ran up. It's kind of retracing right now. So it's, you know, it's currently in a downtrend. You can see that it's respecting that trend line right there. Respecting that trend line. So um, not really much to look at gold right now, guys. Again, you know, it's a pair that really moved during uh, New York session. Uh, had a big move. Gold, gold is funny because gold, gold will typically move in New York session. The next best session to trade gold is Asia session. Um, if it moves in London session, it's because there's some type of news going on. But for the most part, you're going to get most, most of your moves in New York 70% um, of the time. And then the other 25% of the time, you're going to get it during Asia session. And then I'd say the other five, you might get during London session. But for the most part, it is a, London, uh, a New York session a pair so nothing going on with gold right now guys nothing going on it's just sitting there and, you know when gold's moving it doesn't you know when it's truly being traded it's not just sitting still gold is too volatile to just sit still like this so i don't say this guys to tell you we're not going to look at it we're not going to trade it certain pairs move during certain times because the people that trade those pairs trade at a certain time it's a reason why you have the different sessions. And there's a reason why certain pairs move majority in these certain sessions. Can they move in other sessions? Sure. But it's not wise to always trade them when they're not supposed to be traded. You have to have that discipline. All right. This is the difference between someone who, you know, trades and makes seven figures a year trading uh, versus someone, uh, you know, who's blowing accounts or someone who's, uh, you know, 50% of the time consistent. Discipline, you have to have discipline, all right? You have to know when to trade, why to trade, when to fold them, when to hold them, all right? That way you bring out the consistency. 
If you miss a trade, you miss a trade. That's fine. It happens. You're not going to catch every move. All right. Someone's asking about euro pairs. Should we keep a heads up for sales? Uh, yes, euros, the euro pairs are in a downtrend, so you're looking to you're looking for sales. All right. All right. Somebody asked me why is the 34 EMA good? Um, the 34 EMA is a EMA that is close to a Fibonacci level. So there's a 38.2 Fibonacci level. Uh, the 34 is close to that. And so um, price respects FIB levels, all right? And so the 34 EMA is just a good, a good um, it's a good EMA from the standpoint of it. It uh, price respects it. And so you can really, you know, understand the trend uh, around certain EMAs like the 34, the 50, the 100, the 200, the 400, the 800, uh, the five, the eight. You know, there are a lot of you know, EMAs out there that are good just due to the fact that they're used by a lot of traders, uh, as well as they're utilized by uh, you know, a lot of uh, institutional investors. You know, so if the banks and hedge funds with the billion dollar accounts are trading based off of certain FIB levels, uh, then great. So 34 is also a FIB level. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. It's not a traditional FIB level, so it's not one that I, I, uh, that I recognize myself might be an extended FIB level because the traditional FIB level is 38.2. Uh, but I'm not a FIB expert. Uh, I can tell you that right now, I'm not a FIB expert. However, strategy number eight is coming out tomorrow, that strategy, and as a matter of fact, yeah, let's go. Trey just said, let's go. So we're gonna go look at it. I'm gonna show you guys strategy number eight. All right, strategy number eight that will be coming out tomorrow. So the strategy number eight is the fifth strategy. All right. I have my own custom fibs. Uh, my own custom fib levels. So I will explain to you how it works. All right, great. Here's a great, here's a great one. So uh well. GBP AUD, we're above the moving average. Got a nice little bounce there. Looking for a buy candle here, uh, arrow any, any time into this buy trend. Might be able to catch a trade here. Might be able to catch a trade here. We'll keep an eye on that one. All right, GBP, JPY, let me find a pair here. All right, cool. So what you wanna see, uh, rule number one to the, the strategy is, you know, what's the direction of the trend, all right? Direction of the trend is a sales trend on EUR, AUD, all right? So we know we're looking for sales, which means we're gonna be drawing our FIB from top to bottom, all right? 
Uh, next is you want to measure, again, I'm gonna go back here on this point, this area right here. This is invalid, I'll explain why. You want to measure it, your starting point must be a retrace planted on resistance. And if it's a buy, a retrace planted on support. What do I mean by retrace? If the trend is down, a retrace is when price comes back above the moving average for a buy and then comes back down. This is a retrace. We're in a downtrend. Candles are red, back into a buy, back down. That is a retrace. This is a retrace, all right? So we're gonna start from this retrace right here. So the way I would look at this here would be, when I first see this here, like, all right, great, I got my retrace. Going along, going along, going along, going along. In New York session, I got another retrace. This is the previous retrace, current retrace. So as soon as I get this first candle, doesn't matter what color it is, but first candle back above the moving average, on the opposite side, so it's in a buy direction, and we're in a downtrend, I'm doing what? I'm now like, all right, there's my current retrace. Here's my uh, previous retrace. So I will get my fib. And before I put it on, I'm gonna show you guys the fib levels. So here are my custom fib levels. Take a picture of it, screenshot, whatever you wanna do. You have the 100, the 79, the 62, the 50, the 38, the zero, the negative 38, the negative 50, the negative 62. All right, those are my fib levels. Very similar to the traditional. All I did was round up, round to the nearest tenth. All right, made them whole numbers. 178.6 is just rounded up to 79. 61.8 rounds up to 62. 38.2 rounds down to 38. Same thing for the negatives. That's all I did. All right, that's all I did. Now. Here's how we use it. Get the fib. First thing you wanna do is you wanna start, because again, we're in a downtrend, so you draw from the top down. So we're gonna draw from the highest point of the re, or, uh, from the original, I'm sorry, the previous retrace. Because remember, we're, we're, we're here. Imagine if we're right here. All right, great. We're gonna draw from the highest point of the previous retrace to the bottom, to the bottom, right here, to the lowest point before the current retrace. Here's the current retrace. This is the lowest point before the current retrace. So you put the 100 up here at the previous retrace, you put your zero line here at the bottom and you wick the wick. So you got wicks, put it at the wicks, all right? So remember, you draw it from top to bottom for a sale. The 100 starts here and then the zero goes here. And you can see the lines here. There's a zero here. And then you can see up here, the 100. All right. And so now you're waiting for what? Now you're waiting for a, um, as I call it, a rejection candle. I'm going to teach you as well. There are five rejection, you know, five rejection candles that I'm going to teach. All right. Five types. All right. First one I see, you can see right here off the 62. This is a hammer. This is a hammer right here. This one right here, this is a hammer, all right? Uh, a hammer. Can I draw? I can't draw. See it here, so we'll, I'll go over it tomorrow. Uh, but there are five different patterns. So guess what? My entry is on the next candle. When I see that hammer rejection, I put my candle, I mean my entry at the next candle, all right? Now, it rejected off the 62. The stop loss, is the previous is the uh, next highest fib level five pips above it so the 62 is where the rejection was we're going to put our stop loss five pips above the 79 all right so the 79 is at the 1.5775 level so 57757 which means we're going to be going up to the 57 807, all right, 57807. So horizontal line properties, 1.57807. Boom. We want it five pips above the 79. All right, that's where our stop loss is at. And you can see here from our entry to our stop loss, 
21 pips. 21 pips, all right? So it's not the 40 pips. There's no standard stop loss, all right? It's gonna vary. All you know is five pips above the pre, the next. So if it rejects the 62, the 79 is where the uh, stop loss is gonna be, and we want it five pips above, all right? Now, that's the rejection there. I enter on this candle right here. Our entry is on this candle. Boom, this candle right here. All right. Now there are because we we you know we uh, had a rejection at the sixty two. Guess what? Our take profit is going to be at the negative sixty two. All right, the negative sixty two. We only look for rejections at the thirty eight, the fifty the 60 and the 79 uh, and the 79 I'm still debating on that one uh, so we'll see I don't teach 79 but 79 rejection you know if, if, if you do hit it your stop loss will be five pips above the 100 I don't teach on the 79 I don't really like that one I think that's too much of a retrace if you get a retrace off of one of these three probability shows you have a higher win ratio at least the way that I'm, I'm, I'm showing you guys all right so Rejection at the 62. Therefore, your TP1 is going to be zero line. TP2 will be at the negative 38. TP3, the negative 50. And then the final TP, negative 62. Now let's look at it. When I zoom out, boom, it smashed the negative 62. When you have that trade, entry right here, TP1 was the zero line. You got that. Same day, that is a 44 pip trade. So for everyone that did not like the 20 pip take profit, 40 pip stop loss, that ratio, and they said, you know, the risk to reward is off, the fib levels will give you proper risk to reward. This is a two to one or one to two risk to reward. You risk 21 pips to catch 44 pips. But for me, my TP is the negative 62. So TP two is the negative 38. 73 pips, risk 21 to catch 73. Now you're talking about one to 3.5 ratio, all right? It hit the negative 50, that is 82 pips. So now you're talking about one to four ratio. And then it hit our negative at 91 pips. You're talking about a one to 4.5 ratio. Now the ratio is in line. You guys challenged me to have a better risk to reward ratio. So I'm bringing you some fire, which is the FIB strategy. This strategy here, I will be personally using in my FTMO challenge. So you have to watch me on YouTube as I unfold the FTMO challenge and how I do with it. I'm going to be personally utilizing this strategy right here on the FTMO challenge. I can tell you that other strategies work. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram or if you're in any of the group chats, I posted today, one of my original students used strategy number one, bounce arrow go. They manage their risk by using a lower lot size. And they, in six days, in six days, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, they passed the, uh, again, it was, just, it was just the practice test. So I'll, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always 100%. I'm not going to lie to you guys to make it seem better than what it is. Uh, however, there are individuals that do have funded accounts and have gotten them with the software. But this individual uh, is just a practice account, strategy number one. All right. But that's it, guys. Let's look at that again. Let's look to see what the drawdown really was. It only went 12 pip drawdown. So you only really risked 12 pips, that's all it went. You were risking 21, but it only went 12. So 12 pip drawdown to get 44 pip, to get 73, to get 82, to get 91 pips. So if you want great risk reward, this is the fifth strategy that you want to utilize. And again, this doesn't count for me here because there is no zone right here. So this, this retrace right here doesn't count. So don't draw your fibs on retraces that are not planted. They got to plant into the zone. You need them to plant in the zone. So this one's in the zone. All right. So I'll just give you a little guys a little taste. We're not, we're not gonna go too deep into it. Just give you guys a little taste of what you'll see in strategy number eight uh, that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, I will personally be utilizing this strategy uh, plus strategy one to trade uh, my FDMO account. This is why this is a trading system. This is crazy. 
yeah, man, this one's gonna be, this, this is gonna be fire, man. This, this one's gonna be huge. So getting, you know, a lot of holding if you're looking to, if you're looking to uh, catch the, the entire move. For me, I'll tell you guys, I will mainly be looking to take trades uh, back to the zero line. So wherever I get my rejection, I'm just looking to take trades back to the zero line. Uh, as you guys know, with FTMO, they've got a lot of, uh, they have a lot of um, regulations and rules to ensure you stay within parameters. And so for me, I'll be looking to stay within, you know, TP at the zero line, maybe the negative 38. Outside of that, I'm not, I'm, I probably won't look the whole trades that long. Um, but hey, here it is. You know, you use it on higher time frames, lower time frames. I teach it on the 15 minute, uh, but this is just kind of give you guys a, and I'll show you, I'll show you guys one more tonight. I will show you, I'll show you a buy, a buy trade and what it looks like. So you see one in both directions, but this is the fib strategy. Again, my own custom fib levels, which aren't really that custom. They're just more or less rounding to the nearest 10th. Uh, that's it. So let me real quick here in the chat. Uh, if you like the fibs, let's check it. Hold on, let me check the strategy. If you like the fib strategy, if you like the fib strategy, strategy number eight, you know, hey, throw some fire emojis in the chat, some bags in the chat. Let me know if you like that new strategy. Uh, again, it's coming out tomorrow. Uh, so if you guys like that strategy, uh, you know, I got a few people liking it. Uh, and again, as you become more and more ingrained in the uh the culture of trading you, know, you guys will find out that uh you like certain things you're not like certain things uh so i'm glad you, you know you guys uh like that strategy uh i think a lot of people are going to win big with that uh and um i would tell you that once i start next month with you know we have all 10 strategies out uh i will then be um starting an ftmo challenge in february and i want people to jump in with me Matter of fact, I'm actually gonna start next week with my practice account. So uh, for those that wanna do that, uh, all next week, when you guys see my account, I will be on my demo account with FTMO on the practice challenge. So I'll be taking, uh, I'm only gonna use two strategies. I'm gonna use the FIB strategy and I'm gonna use the bag strategy, strategy number one. Those are the only two strategies that I'm gonna use for the, uh, for the FIB, you know what I mean? I'm sorry, for the FTMO challenge, uh, bag strategy, because the drawdown is a little more uh, potentially the way it's traded, I'm going to use uh, a lower lot size than I would be on the on the actual uh, fib strategy. Uh, so, hey, those who want to do it, I'll tell you, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, we'll start the challenge next week, and hey, every day we we'll just start posting results in the group, man. So hey, everybody gonna take trades throughout the week. Post results in the group and let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So uh it's top of the hour, a little past. Let's uh again, every hour and hour, I'll always gonna hit you guys for all the, the newbies on the call. Uh we're gonna hit up with the um uh, what are they gonna call it? The uh now I draw a blank, man. It's late, guys. It's late. Uh the disclaimer. So you guys already know trading forex is a risk. Past results are not indicative of future results. Practice on a demo account first, please. When you get consistent, then move to a live account. There are no guarantees. Myself, Calvin, the other educators, as well as Avoya Prime, we are not financial advisors. We are financial educators. All right. Uh, it just so happens that our education is helping others to make money. Uh, and so I just want to shout that out to you guys. All right. Now that we're past that, Let's go look at the charts. Euro GDP, people, someone's calling out. So we'll take a look at it and then I'm gonna come back to Q&A. Come back to Q&A. Q&A, EUR GDP. EUR GDP, oh, we got a bag entry on Euro GDP. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. All right, so strategy number one, we're in a downtrend, we see that. We got a bag entry. It bounced off the zone, bounced down. Right now we're about 18, 19 pips. I, I'm gonna take the trade myself. I'm gonna take it for 10 pips uh, just because we are not fully 20 pips away. I'm gonna take it for 10 pips, all right? 
So I'm taking Euro GBP sale uh, right now. All right. So I am in that trade. Euro GBP. It is bad. Somebody said USD chef buy, but I don't like that buy. USD chef? Yeah. Someone just called out USD chef earlier. Did it make it? Let's go, let's go look at it. USD chef. Throw arrow on there. USD Chef, um, it's not a bad entry. There's no bounce. They didn't bounce off anything. So just because you have a buy, guys, uh, we talked about it last night, the three common mistakes that beginners make or anyone beginning with, with the software, with Arrow, make are getting an entry in the right direction and just taking a trade. You have to have the bounce. There is no bounce. It bounced way back here. You had a bounce, but you, you've had a lot of drama going on here. All right. You had a down arrow before this up arrow. Doesn't count. Plus, the next zone is less than 20 pips away. Look at that. Nine pips away, almost 10 pips away. There's no bounce. You need that bounce. All right, need that bounce. Need that bounce. So USD chef, negative. Negative. Your GBP, we in that bad boy. I'm just in it for 10 pips. Maybe 15. We'll see how it moves. We'll see how it moves. So I'm gonna stop share here. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go put my stop loss on. Put my stop loss on. I know some people know the exact number for the stop loss. You mind telling the people for the beginners? Nope. Uh, so again, uh, on behalf of uh of my compliance team here, you know, I'm not allowed to give exact take profit, exact stop loss. You need to measure it yourself. Uh, I'm going for 10 pip trade on this sale. Um, and I'm gonna do a 20 pip stop loss. I can't give you exact take profit, I can't give you exact stop loss uh, based on the fact that would be uh, financial advice. So I cannot give that information. Uh, now to figure out what it is. So for what I've done here, uh, once you put the trade on, if you, put your mouse on the dotted green line with your entry and you click on it and hold it and drag it down, like right here, like so forth, you'll see that it says five, nine, six, oh, 60 pips. So that's really six pips, all right, 6.0. So you wanna drag it down until it says what? Until it says 100, 100, 101, whatever, that's close enough. And then you just drop it, all right? You just drop it, GBP AUD buy. Hey, we got some movement tonight. That is that buy we're looking for. Oh, Nelly. I don't know if I like that one anymore. It's too close to the zone. We Way too close. Buy. Yeah, I'm not taking that one, guys. I'm not taking that one. Your GBP, we're in that trade. I'm actually going to put it down a little more. I might take 15 pips. There we go. We'll leave it there. We'll, we'll see what happens later on. So I'm going 15 pips. I adjusted my take profit to 15 pips, guys, on my Euro GBP trade. Uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Now, why do we take this trade? Oh, uh, so I took the trade because, number one, we are in a downtrend. We're in a downtrend. All right. We had a slight little pullback here. Come back down. It's respecting the trend line still because it's, you know, hey, uh, you, you still see this, the stair steps heading down. And so for me, I like to take that trade for a, uh, let me adjust this to, I adjust my take profit to 15 pips. I'm gonna adjust my stop loss to 30. We're not taking the full 20, so I'm not gonna put it at 40. Two to one ratio still. Uh, and uh, so that's part of the trade, guys. You get a bag entry, bounce, arrow. We got a trade here. Uh, it's inside the money zone. All the rules apply you know, for a, uh, for a trade, you know, for a sale trade. Your JPY, you see, starting to head back down. Remember correlation, your Euro pairs should be moving together. Let's see, Euro NZD was bouncing up. We'll see what happens with that one. Euro AUD, kind of stalling out. We'll see that one, all right? But Euro GBP, I'm in for a sale. I'm in for a sale. GU is not doing anything, GH too high. GJ, nothing, G Chef. I'm looking for G Chef to break above that, that line there. We could be in for a nice little Asian breakout. 
here pretty soon. Somebody keep an eye on that one. Same thing with GCAT. I'd love to see that break out. And GBP and ZD. And we ain't going to be doing much with that one. Not right now. Your AUD. All right, let me stop share. We'll come back to that trade here. Let me go and let's check the q and It's blown up. I need to answer the questions. Someone asked, how do you turn on the alert for all time frames at once? So for me, uh, the only way you can have the alerts on for all time frames is if uh, uh, if you have all time frames open and the, and an arrow on all time frames. So that's the only way. Right now, uh, right now there isn't a way as of right now. All right, guys, give me a second here. I'm pulling up my, I am pulling up my trade here. All right, your GBP chart. Your GBP about to head in the right direction, baby. Just waiting for it. All right, got to put up on the chart so I can watch it right on my phone while I answer these questions. Uh, so the link for all trading live trading sessions is different. There are two different links. So we will always send the link out uh, in the announcements channel, and then someone will typically forward those to the different groups. But there are two different links for the channels. All right. Uh, someone said, "Would you suggest to continue your own charts as a, a DAP trader?" I just don't want to crutch myself by relying solely on the arrow system. So I would say the arrow system does a lot of the marking of the charts up for you. Uh, it draws a lot of your support and resistance zones. Uh, you understand where the trend is. Uh, um, you're understanding you know, what's, you know, how the, the actual uh, overall trade is trending, you know, with the trending candles. So you know, the arrow system is doing a lot of the work for you. If you want to have trend lines and you're just used to having additional, you know, you know, and that makes you feel secure, then do what makes you feel secure. Uh, do what makes you feel secure. Green zone popped up on the EG. Let's go take a look at that. Share screen. People said they got a green zone on your GBP. I don't have a green zone as of right now. So again, different brokers, you're gonna have uh, a different uh, a setup. So I can tell you right now, I don't have a green zone. I'm not to say I won't get one uh later but as of right now i don't have one so i'm staying in a trade and again guys like right now uh slightly negative but once the red line gets underneath the green line and both lines are underneath we're in profit and you'll see the pip counter start to turn positive it'll turn positive zero it'll be a green zero and then it'll go plus one plus two plus three so there it is it went plus it went green zero so i don't see that if you see that the rule is to go ahead and exit the trade. I don't see it. I don't have it. So again, trade with you. Trade what you based on the broker you're utilizing. All right. Again, uh, we talked about it last night. Uh, this week is the last week that I use this broker. Uh, I've been using the other broker, uh, but uh, you know, for some reason on this call, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't use an account. So I'm, I'm migrating everything over to the new broker. Um, and so. Uh, if, you know, again, I can't tell you, uh, you know, again, tell you what broker to use is uh, financial advice. And so I'll tell you this, when you're looking at a broker, you want to look for a few things. You want to look for a broker that has a vast amount of asset classes to trade. So uh, everyone likes Hugo's way because they have, and we'll go pull it up real quick, view symbols. You can see Hugo's way has a lot of Forex pairs. You have the majors, you have the exotics, and then you have the crosses. All right. And then they have a, a lot of the indices, both the U.S. and international indices. Energy, so your oils. Metals, so your gold and silver and platinum. 
your cryptocurrencies, a big, big array of cryptocurrencies, your futures, and your stocks. This is why a lot of people like to trade with Hugo's way, because they have a lot of variety of things to trade. Arrow works on every one of these, all right? So in a broker, you want to make sure that you know, the broker you're with, they have the, you know, the pairs that you want to trade, um, whether it be now or in the future, you know? You never know what you may like to trade later on down the line. Uh, number two, you want to look for a broker uh, that has low spreads. So like right now, the spread on Euro GBP is 1.5 pips. So it's just a pip and a half. That's a low spread right now. Typically, it's higher though uh, with Hugo's way. Uh, but you want to find a broker with a low spread. Um, and the reason why is because the lower the spread is, so the lower the difference is between the red and white lines here, the faster you are getting into profit, all right? Uh, so number two, uh, number two is, what's number two? So we got vast array of uh, asset classes to trade, low spreads, uh, a broker that has no fees on Bitcoin transfers. So I like to transfer and withdraw my money in Bitcoin because it's the fastest way. You know, with Bitcoin uh, on Hugo's way, I can do a withdrawal and have the money into my Bitcoin wallet uh, in less than in two hours or less. Um, so you want to, you know, and so the new broker can do, I think they do up to, you know, uh, at least the one that I'm utilizing, they do up to $5,000 withdrawal in an hour or less. So that, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so you want fast withdrawals, but you also want no fees. If you're doing a transfer or withdrawal or deposit with Bitcoin, you don't want the broker to take out fees for the transaction. Um, that's just another way they make money because the Bitcoin already takes out a fee for moving the money, for moving your money from wallet to wallet. You don't need a broker taking extra money out from you so that when you transfer 500 to your account, you only get $478. You don't want that. So you want a broker that you know doesn't have to, that doesn't worry about fees. They're not being greedy. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, for me, you want a broker that is uh, an A book broker. Now, let me explain what an A book broker is. So there's a difference between A book broker and B book broker. An A book broker, I'm sorry, B, let's start with B book. Hugo's Way is a B book broker. What does that mean? So a B book broker will trade against you, meaning that they actually take trades against you. Uh, they also will manipulate the spread. As you guys have noticed, this red and white line, they keep going further apart, close together, further apart, close together, further apart, close together. They're manipulating the market at the moment, all right? They're manipulating the market, all right? So you don't want a broker that pays people to get in there and literally manipulate the market. But for example, if it gets down here to the take profit line and the spread opens up, that is a manipulation. It should always stay relatively the same, all right? Um, and it shouldn't constantly be opening and closing like you see it here now, that's manipulating the market. Um, and so uh, they do other things. For example, if you're using uh, uh, a auto trading bot, you know, uh, you know, a EA, if you're using that, uh, they may block certain trades. So for example, if your bot hedges, then, you know, which hedging means for those who don't know, if a, you know, for example, if we're going in the wrong direction, let's say we, we put, you know, the bot puts a sale right here and it starts going in the wrong direction. Well, it'll put a, another sale up here. That way, that way, if take profit is down here, now that, that there are two sales on, it'll bring the take profit up a little higher because both sales will close out at that new take profit line and make the same or a little bit more money than it would with this one entry way down here, all right? So that's hedging, all right? It'll hedge for you. Price goes the opposite direction. It's gonna place multiple trades on in the opposite direction, heading in the right, in the overall trend uh, to help you out and make profit, all right? So hedging is a, if it's done right, can be very, very valuable. But brokers that are B-book brokers, they have software that uh, can detect if you're using a EA or an auto trading bot. And then what do they do? They will then block some of the trades. So for example, if the trade is going the wrong way, I've seen it and I've talked to people where those brokers will block the trade. It'll block your MT4. So it'll block your EA from hedging. They send the signal so it will not put the hedge on. So you'll wake up and you're like, why am I so far negative and this thing didn't hedge? Because the EA, you know, because the broker is blocking it. These are some of the tr tricks and the tactics that these brokers use you know, if they're B-book brokers. Why do they use this? Well, two reasons. They get paid two ways. 
every time you lose a trade, it hits stop loss or you close it out in the negative, that money goes to the broker. All right. Number two, every trade, there's a commission. So depending on what lot size you trade with, there's a commission that you have to pay automatically. So on this trade right here, uh, I looked at it already. I'm paying a, with Hugo's way, standard. For every standard, you know, I got a standard lot trade on right now. For every standard lot, you pay a $5 commission. So on 15 pips, that should be $150 I should make because a standard lot is $10, $10 per pip. If I catch 15 pips here, 10 times 15 is 150 minus the $5, uh, minus the $5 fee, I would make $145. If I lost 15 pips, I lose 150 bucks, but I really would lose $155 because they're going to they're get their $5. And so they make money both ways when you lose money and then the fee. So the goal for them is to make sure you lose so that they can make more money. They don't care about you. They care about putting money in their pocket. All right, that's the game plan. So that's what a B book broker is. An A book broker doesn't care about trading against you. What they care about is our fees. So they're gonna do everything in their power to make it enticing for you to use their broker because they just care about the fees. Because again, remember like I told you, you pay a fee for every trade you put on, which is fine. You gotta pay to play. All right, there's no problem with that. So uh, they don't manipulate the market. Whenever you place a trade, the trade goes straight to the banks that are trading. You know, as you guys know, the banks are the ones that actually make the market. You know, they're the ones that actually create the actual market. All right. So the, they go straight to the market. You don't have to worry about market manipulation. All right. You can feel safe knowing that your EA is making you money. You can feel safe that this bag entry trade right here is going to hit take profit and you're not going to have to worry about it. All right. Uh, we're up six pips right now. So for those who kept it at 10, we're not too far out. Six pips and running. And so uh, for those who want to know uh, uh, the broker I'm using, uh, send me a direct message, you know, DM, whether it be on Instagram or on Telegram. Uh, my handle on Instagram and on Telegram is at Nate Got the Bag. Uh, I'll put that in the, in the chat. But find me on there. Uh, as again, I cannot give that financial advice out. And again, even when I send it to you, I'm going to have a disclosure with the broker I use. It's going to tell you, make sure you do your own research. There's millions of brokers out there. Arrow works on any broker. But I'm just letting you guys know what's available and what you should be looking at. The broker that I use has all of that. They don't charge any fees for Bitcoin tra transfers, whether it be withdrawals or deposits. They're a book broker, so they're not going to manipulate the market. So when I run my EA, it's not going to, I'm, I'll be fine. They have lower spreads than Hugo's way, uh, as well as they have as many asset classes uh, as Hugo's way. So all the criteria I gave you, they meet. Uh, and I'm happy with that. Uh, and I'll be moving from Hugo's way. You know, Hugo's way has done me well uh, over the years. Uh, I have seen market manipulation with Hugo's way. So don't, you know, I, I've seen it. However, I've had success because I do more manual trading than I do EA trading. And so I have better control over my trades. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, continue to trade. You know, I've tested this A book broker out already, demo uh, and live. And so I'm pleased with them. I'm gonna continue to use them. So again, do your research out there. Um, I'll share with you the name of them, but again, I can't give you financial advice. You gotta find me. Let me go ahead and stop sharing here. If you wanna find me at, I'm putting it into the chat right now. This is my Instagram handle, as well as my handle on uh, on Telegram. All right. So let me finish answering some of these chats here. That bag trade looking good. We looking good. All right, looking good. Uh, so adding a M W or wedge detection pattern in the software. Uh, I thought about that. There might be future updates. So we'll see. As of right now, uh, you know, I just want to get everybody, you know, trading successfully with the strategies at hand. But that might be an update uh, coming just to make the trading experience more automated for you guys. All right. Uh, we talked about GA already. What to do if NT4 stops sending message alerts on phone? 
Uh, so if you're having issues with MT4, people have had it over the last couple of days, and it's not just you guys, I've known, you know, in the industry having issues, I would contact MT4 and find out what's going on. All right. I haven't seen that issue. Every time you hear that little ding, that's me getting a notification. Um, uh, we talked about this earlier. Somebody asked me, understanding when a trend is reversing. Yes, strategy number nine, the market strategy, we'll go over that. So wait until it comes out. All right, somebody asked me about uh, getting notifications on, on the computer. When you have both of them on true, every time an arrow pops up, you will get the alert on your computer. All right. Just playing around right now. Come on, baby. Let's get this 10, 15 pips. Patience is key. Let's go back and look uh, real quick. Uh, GA is making a move up. Good for it. So G pair is starting to move up. I like that. G chef, we're almost there. If this candle right here closes above, I will be in for a buy. Uh, G cat, not really doing much of nothing. G in moving up. So a lot of, again, here, here's where that correlation comes in handy, guys. You see a lot of GBP pairs are starting to move to the upside. So it makes a lot of these trades valid. And again, how they're moving up. From a correlation standpoint, typically the euros are moving down. That's why I feel confident in taking that euro trade, that euro GBP sale, all right? Because there it's selling, pounds are heading up. This is where the correlation comes in handy. So, you know, hey guys, this is how night go. You see, last night we had no trades. I did more teaching. Tonight, looks like we may get into a couple of trades. We might get another little trade here. Uh, GU can break the zone. Um, and the line, hold on, let me zoom in. I don't think we said that for GU. Let's check that GU, the Asia channel was a total of 22 pips. So that's a good channel. We need to break above this line and the zone. Now let's see, Do we got enough pips move. Yeah, about 28 pips. See, so yeah, we're good. So yeah, we get a break above both the line and the zone. It's good for a buy. GPAUD. All right, we're not in that one, but it's moving up. GJ, move up. All right, I'm waiting for G Chef to break above that line, break, break above Asia's channel. We can get a close above Asia's channel. I'm in that bad boy. Look at that. We're up seven pips right now on Euro GBP. All right, up seven pips. G Cab moving up. GBP NZD moving up. Euro AUD heading back down. Heading back down. So again, like I said, heading back down. You want the correlations. Oops. Euro GBP, we're in that trade. Nice movement. Look at that. Euro JPY heading down and Euro NZD heading back down. This is the correlation you want to see moving in the trend direction. This is when you take the time. Again, last night, took no trade. That's fine. We didn't lose any money. Knowing when not to trade and, and saving yourself from losing money is just as important as knowing when to trade and catching pips. Keep that in mind. You don't always have to trade. Do not force it. If you miss your trade, you miss your trade. I trade London sessions all the time. I tell you, I get mad at, my, I get mad at the market all the time. I'm up from midnight to three, four o'clock in the morning. I go to sleep and wake up and the moves happen. I'm like, oh, it moved 120 pips when I, when I, while I was asleep. It happens. Then the next night, this happens. You get to the point where you, now you can start catching some trades. All right, market's still slow, but hey, we in it. This is how the market moves, all right? Nothing we can do about it. We don't move the market because we don't have enough money. 
all we want to do is ensure that we are uh, in the you know trading in the direction of the market trending. All right. So somebody keep an eye on GCAD. Somebody keep an eye on GU and GCAD GU. G chef. Oh, I'm sorry, G chef. My bad, G chef. G chef and GU. Keep an eye on those. Especially G chef. We're, we're real close. We got about three minutes until the next candle. Uh, and then Euro GBP. Yeah, we're in profit. So I'm waiting for that bad boy to go ahead and just drop it like it's hot. So that we can actually get to this bad boy. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's get this drop. Let's get this drop. We need this full drop here. About four or five pips, just back and forth. Uh, while we wait, let me go ahead and ask questions. All right. Uh, we have a question about strategy number eight. Uh, no, nah, I'm not looking at the means, man. I got my development team is 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 uh is contacting me, guys. So we're just working on some some special things coming up. Uh oh, uh oh, we got a notification. Let's go back to the charts real quick. We got a notification. G Chef buy. G Chef buy here. Is it now? What is it? G Chef buy. Yep. Let's take a look at it. G Chef. We already know we're an uptrend. It's above the zone and we got a bag entry. Come on, guys. One click trading. Let me make sure we go back and look here. Two, two, uptrend, we Gucci. Let's see how much room we got. Uh-oh. How much room we got to the next zone. 40 pips, I'm in the buy. I'm in the buy. I'm in the G Chef buy. You can get it if you want to. Up to you. And I'm going for 20 pips. It's a good trade. We got a Asia session breakout and we got a bag entry combined. The more of the strategies that combine together make a more powerful uh, uh, potential entry. All right. Gives you a higher probability chance of catching the pips you want to catch. All right. What are your GDP doing? Playing games with us. All right, so I'm gonna jump out here. One second here.
right, so let's get out of here real quick. Stop sharing, and we're gonna look at. So the fifth levels tomorrow on the strategy will be the same fifth levels I showed you tonight, guys. I'm not gonna show you anything tonight that's not gonna be on the strategy, all right? All right, how do I set up money zone? Should I convert? All right, so the money zone, you need to convert 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time to whatever your broker's time is. That is correct, all right? Uh, yes, someone asked if I had a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, uh, and it is at Nate Got the Bag. The Bag is my YouTube channel as well. So same, uh, same handle as my Instagram as Telegram. Someone asked, can you use the FIB outside of the money zone? Yes, you can. Um, so yeah, yes, you can use it outside the money zone. I'm gonna, you know, in the video, uh, I teach uh, to use it inside the money zone as far as your entries. Uh, um, and you'll see how it sets up, but uh, you can also use it outside the money zone as well. All right, you can definitely use it outside the money zone. Um, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think I talked about that. You can use it outside. So FIBs are great. Uh, look like we're doing pretty well. Euro GBP trade, so that's seven pips in profit. So for those looking for that 10 pips, we're just about there. And we're only down about two, three pips right now with G Chef. So good deal, good deal. We head in that right direction. G Chef, we're in that trade. Uh, somebody asked, do you need to learn all the other strategies to be able to use FIBS? Uh, no. I mean, you know, the whole goal is I'm going to give multiple strategies out. And the ones you like the best are the ones you can trade. If you don't, you know, they're, they're, they're not really, they connect. You know, if you learn more strategies, you'll see how they connect, you know. So, for example, there was a, a, a lady in the group last night or yesterday or earlier this week. Oh, let's get back in here. Let's get back. We're about to hit that 10 pips. Over 200 people on the chat. I mean, in the group. We here. Uh, so uh, Interesting. My uh, my MT4, my phone is a lot faster than my MT4, my computer. Interesting. We, we, yeah, we, we, we're looking good, though. We're looking good. We're looking real good. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Man, that was interesting. Up over 10 pips right now on, on the uh, Euro GBP. So if you kept your take profit at 10 pips, it hit 10 pips. I don't know what's going on right now. We're getting there though. It's just a little lag behind. Well, over 10 pips. G Chef now in profit or about to be in profit. All right. So we're looking good, guys. We're looking good. We're looking good. Looking real good. Looking real good. Um, so uh, understanding multiple pairs, uh, multiple trades, uh, our strategies. The more strategy you understand, the better. So, for example, you got this bag entry here, right? But if you understood the M formation strategy, you'd cut the trade a couple candles earlier and got an earlier entry. You see the M here, all right? M formation planted, it's leaning, planted at the um, at the zone, the support zone, it's leaning. We talked about it earlier. This candle right here broke below the neckline. You put an entry here on this candle. That's one candle before you got the bag entry. So you could have got two, two trades on the way down. All right. So just understanding more strategies allow you to uh, compound your trades by putting multiple trades on. Uh, it allows you to uh, it allows you to be able to, you know, when the market is, you know, all over the place. And, you know, let's say your number one strategy, your go-to strategy is not really panning out the way it should be. Hey. Now you don't have to worry about it because 
you got another strategy that may work in different market conditions. So that's the reason why there are multiple strategies that are given out for Arrow. Uh, let's go back to your GBP. You're looking real good, guys. Your GBP and big profit. All right. About to hit TP. It's 15 for TP for me. Looking real Gucci. We Gucci. We live. In fact, look, stop this. Stop this share here. Oh, yeah. I'm about to hit TP. I'm about to hit TP. I want 15 pits. I'm on 15. Come on, close out, baby. Close out. Close out. Did I go for more than 15? Let me count them pips. No, it's 15. Hmm. We're getting there. A little pullback. All right. Ain't worried about it right now. Ain't worried about it right now. Let me ask you some more questions real quick. Keep an eye on these trades. Anybody else see something called out? We almost there though. We almost had the TP for your GBP. If you kept your Euro GBP TP at 10 pips, uh, you already hit TP. For those who moved to 15 like I did, hey, we're, we're, we're on our way. We're on our way. Um, Please list three major mistakes again by beginners. Uh, all right, so the you know the three major mistakes are taking a trade without seeing the bounce. So taking just taking an arrow and not not waiting on the bounce. Number one, number two is trading against the trend. So just getting trigger happy and you got an arrow, so you took the trade. And then number two is trading outside of the money zone. Those are the three major mistakes that most beginners make. Uh, and whether you're you know, just using the software, you might have experience, but training the software can be a, you know, a little bit of a change for you. All right. Someone said they're in a green zone for Euro GBP. If you're in a green zone, I wouldn't take the trade. That's just me. Again, you trade what you see. However, I, you know, uh, as you can see here, we're not in a green zone, uh, for myself, uh, the broker, you know, different brokers, different brokers. Again, as we talked about, are going to have different looks. We're almost at the TP when it comes to Euro GBP. All right, looking real good. Let's go look at G Chef. G Chef, we finally pushing up. All right, cool, cool, cool. We're getting that push. Euro GBP, we should be closing out pretty soon. Should be closing out real soon, real soon. Wait for that TP to get hit. Uh, someone asked me why we're not going for 20 pips on your GBP. Uh, the reason by being is because the next zone is, is like 18 pips from our entry. So I, I, I wanted to go for 10 quick pips uh, and I decided to go for 15 uh, just because I saw that the pound pairs were starting to move upward. So that correlation uh, is there. And so I like that correlation that you can see here. Uh, we're about to get rewarded when this TP gets hit here really soon. So that's why I moved it up to 15 pips. Uh, I mean, if you want to take profit now, you can take profit now. Uh, G Chef, we're moving good. Five pits in profit, looking real good. G U, somebody just put the way. Oh, well, we, we're looking good in G U. It's heading that way as well. Heading that way. Your GBP is almost there. Come on, yo, come on. Chicka, 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 chicka. Push us exactly. I need a kiss. Go on ahead, get us a little kiss in that, in that, in that profit level. If you're in profit, hey, everybody should be in profit right now. If you're not in profit. Uh, don't worry about it. Hey, there's going to be more trades. This is the beauty of Forex. Never be beat yourself up for missing a trade. So if you went to the bathroom and you missed the trade that we're all in, don't chase a trade. If we're already in the trade, the trade is moving in the right direction, never chase a trade. All right? Never chase a trade. Uh, also, ensure that you, um, uh, if you miss a trade, you just miss a trade. So right now, because we're so far in profit with Euro GBP, I'm gonna move my stop loss right now to protect myself just in case price moves away. So I'm gonna move my stop loss in profit uh, three pips. So what this means is if price goes backwards and hits my stop loss, my stop loss is in profit. So I'm this is a guaranteed trade for me at this point. I would not lose on this trade. I would, I'm guaranteed three pips. I actually might move a little further. We're at TP, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, and so usually when I get about 
75% of the way to my TP, uh, I, I move my stop loss and profit. So on a typical 20 pip trade, once I see about 15 to 17 pips in profit, at that point, I'm looking to move my stop loss into profit to guarantee I don't take a loss on the trade, all right? You wanna protect yourself, all right? It's all about uh, protecting yourself to the downside. So we're looking real good, guys. We're looking real good. Looking real good, real good. Come on, your GBP, push. Push. Let me go answer some more questions here in the chat. This is why Nate got the bag. <laughs> yeah, man, we're trying to get it, man. We're trying to get it. Take profit smash. All right, oh, I see it. Uh, let's see here. Let me go take a look here. Uh, we're not there quite yet on G Chef. Uh, not quite yet there on there. It's just lollygagging. I'm probably about to take profit. It's just BS, and I don't like when the BS like that. Come on, baby, push, push, push. Come on, baby. Come on. We almost there. Go back to the charts real quick. I'll get these questions, guys, but yeah, just make sure we check these out real quick. We'll make sure we're checking the chart out. We almost there. Let's go look at G Chef. And G Chef, for everybody knows, G Chef, that is Calvin's favorite pair. G Chef is Calvin's favorite pair. He loves G Chef. So I love when Calvin's on. When he calls the G Chef trade out, he don't he don't miss very often. I don't, matter of fact, I don't think he's missed. He, he hasn't caught up. A losing trade yet on G Chef. We moving. Look at that G Chef move. What we gonna get what we got. What we got. What we got. What we got. G U. We got G U. Do we got the trade we want? G U. It's a bag entry. Broke above the high. All right. Oh uh, man. So for me. I'm in this trade. Let's go. I'm in the trade. Ah, uh, we getting it late. I don't like it. It's moving, moving too fast. Uh, so my year of GDP trade hit TP. So uh, miss GU. GU is a great trade right there. GU great trade. Uh, it's already moving. G pair is taking off right now. All right. So real quick, guys, just so I can die. Hey, matter of fact, I see G Chef is going is going in the right direction too, really fast. So hey, if you hit if you hit take profit, if you hit that take profit on your GBP, hey, blow the chat up, make some noise. First TP of the new year, we're getting ready to be number two. If you were able to get into that GU trade, you caught that you got you caught that trade. We, we we on our way, guys. First TP of the new year. Hey, look at all that money. Everybody making money out here. What I love to see, baby. It's what I love to see. Love to see it. So this is how you trade. You gotta have patience. I know yesterday was boring. Hey, but you gotta have patience. We'll get there. We will get there. We'll get there. We're up 10 pips right now. So your GBP is done. G Chef on his way. 20 pips. If you got into GU, I missed it. That's, I didn't chase the trade. See, guys, it took off. I didn't want to chase the trade. I'm not chasing that. So I missed it. That's my fault. I didn't have my. Uh, I didn't have my one click button up here. So I missed that trade. I'm okay with that. All right. G Chef, I'm looking for my 20 pips. Already got my 15 on Euro GBP. I'm waiting on this. 
and we on our way. This is arrow. This is how we do it. Bounce, arrow, go. This combination right here was a bag entry trade in the direction of the trend plus an Asia session breakout. Two in one. All right, Euro GBP was a bag entry trade. Bounce, arrow, go off of the resistance in the direction of the trend inside the money zone. That's how you trade. This is how we do it live. So, so you guys know it is real. A lot of the reasons why we do these calls live are to be able to educate you live, help you make some money live while you're learning, uh, but then also let you know that it's real. Because you've probably seen many gurus show you old trades. Oh, I would have done this here, this here, that there. Great, but if they do it live, which a lot of gurus don't trade live, and they're just all talk. Here at Royal Prime and here with, with Arrow, we're not all talk. We trade, it's what we do. All right, we're gonna get into these trades with you and we're gonna make some money with you, all right? And again, for those who are in the chat, you're seeing the same things. What is that? You're seeing people make money with Arrow. It's not a fluff, all right? We make money around here with Arrow. Follow the rules, make money. Again, no guarantees, but those who are following the rules are having great success. As you can see, we follow the basic rules that I teach. I didn't change anything, all right? Didn't change anything. We're following the basic rules and we are making money. All right, guys, top of the hour is 2 o'clock, 2.05. So uh, we'll start off with another disclaimer. Hey, trading Forex is uh, a risk. All right, past profits are not indicative of future results. Please trade responsibly. If you invest, invest what you can only afford to lose. There are no guarantees, even with Arrow. Myself, Calvin, the other educators, as well as the Voya Prime, we are not financial advisors. We're financial educators, all right? With that being said, man, who's having fun tonight, man? I don't know about y'all, man, but hey, trades, look at that. We're about to get another 20 pips right here. It's about to be a good night. It's about to be a good night. I like it. These are the nights to look for. Uh, for those who were on live with us back in, in uh, November, uh, New York sessions were live. Actually, New York sessions, they had more fun then, you know, uh, then London, we got a couple of trades on London, but New York session was catching trades all day long uh, just because of the way the economic news works. They just had better movement. Uh, and so you got to see that. That's, that's why we want to expand and have educators trading the entire 12 hours of the money zone. That way, no matter what time you get on, you have opportunity to catch the trades. You have opportunity to, uh, uh, to learn. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's the game plan is to bring more value. So we'll get there, guys. We're, we're, we're building. Uh, we're we're going to build faster uh, for you guys. That way we bring more value. Uh, so it's, a lot more is coming. A lot more asset classes. Uh, so look out for it. Look out for it. Uh, we're up 11 pips in G Chef. All right. If you're just not getting on, we are in a G. We, we already took profit 15 pips on Euro GBP. Uh, now we are uh, on G Chef. Uh, we took a trade on G Chef, uh, as you can see here. Zoom out. 
we're in an uptrend, more green zones than red zones, which means that we should only be looking for buy trades. All right. We have a bag entry trade here, bounce, arrow, go. And we also had a break of this line right here, which is the agent session. All right, it's the agent channel. We broke the top of the agent channel in the direction of the trend. So we had two strategies play out and give us the entry. Now, our green line isn't exactly down here where it should be because of the spread. So the spread, the difference between uh, bid and ask, so the red and white line here was a little higher. That's why our entry is here for those who are wondering. All right, but we're currently up 11 pips. Our prop take profit line is here at 20 pips. We draw that trend line, boom, right there uh, on the M right here. We, we should be good to hit that 20 pips a little bit more before we find some serious rejection. So we should be pretty good. I feel good about getting this 20 pips. All right. Uh, GU was a buy. I was too slow to get into it. Uh, we're missing out on that one. That's fine. It was an agent session breakout. No real bag entry here. Uh, you had a bounce here, but it was a down arrow before the up arrow. So I wouldn't call this, a, this isn't a true bag entry, but it is an agent session breakout. All right, it is an agent session breakout. And GU is moving. GA moving on up, but it's into its zone. So I would be taking that trade. Uh, GJ had a bounce a little while ago. So I wouldn't, I mean, we just missed that one. G Chef, we just waiting for it to move on up. Come on, baby. Uh, G Cat. If we can get a close above the zone, that zone disappears, we'll have an agent session breakout and potentially a bag entry trade. And GCAD is a is currently in an uptrend, more green zones than red zones. So we could be looking for an entry on that one later. All right. GBP NZD. It's moving up as well, but no, there's no entry there. Euro uh heading back down. Euro GBP. Smash at 15 pips. Your JPY starting to head back up. Little your NZD little retrace there. All right, so we'll go back to G Chef. G Chef looking good, and we're looking at potentially getting into. Uh, I'm on a five minute G. I'm gonna go to five, 15 minutes. Why did you say 15 minutes? Oh, 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes on the GI. All right. We missed GU, GCAD, that's what it was. Oh yeah, GCAD, yeah. Oh yeah, GCAD looking good. Looking too good. All right. Looking too good. Come on, G-Chef, look at that at 20 pips. So two o'clock guys for me, uh, I like to take a break here. Uh, as I get, you know, bathroom break as well as, you know, something to eat, drink, whatever the case may be. Uh, we're in a trade right now. So uh, I'm gonna wait till this trade hits take profit. Then we'll take a break uh, here shortly. All right, guys.
Come on, G Chef. Playing with us. What's everything else doing? G you took off. Golly. Yeah, if you got in GU, you, you should hit 20 pips. So if you got in GU, you should hit 20 pips. GI, everything. Come back down a little bit here. Hmm. Well, guys, this is where I like to take profits. You see everything start to hit these resistance levels and start to bounce back off, uh, mostly G pairs. Uh, again, they may go back up, but for me, I like to secure profits. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm closing my trade out on G Chef here. And that'll put me over 20 pips total for the day. So uh, you can do what you want to do and hold it. I can tell you right now, though, I am taking profit right now on G Chef. So I'm closing that trade out now. All right. Close my trade out. Uh, I'm going to throw some tunes on. Look at that G-Shift go back up. You bet not. I'm going to throw some tunes on, and I'm going to uh, go use the restroom, grab me something to drink, guys. Uh, so we got somebody over there, 20 pips of GU. Oh, yeah, GU. Hey, here we go. So we got some GU love. 40 and GU. Okay, okay. GU and GC for 14, 15. All right. So I'm going to throw some tunes on, and I'm going to go get something to drink. Uh, and I'll be back, guys. All right, so we'll be back here. It's 2.15 a.m. We got about 45 minutes left for the night. Go ahead and um, like I say we take a 15 minute break, guys. See you guys shortly.
All right, guys, we are back. It's 2.30 a.m. So the standard time here. We got 30 minutes till we're done. Two and oh. Well, one and a half and oh, I guess you could say. We're not fully done with G-Chef yet. I got out early. Uh, and let me walk you guys through what I saw that made me get out early real quick. Uh, because, you know, two reasons I got out early. I'm going to show you one. The other one, I'm just going to be honest. I have no patience. <laughs> Uh, I have no, I hate taking long trades. Uh, I don't like sitting in trades. So, but here's, I'm going to show you what I saw. I mean, look at G chef. If, if, you, if you're still in that trade, you should be up. I think I closed out with about seven pips. It should be up about 10, 11 pips right now. Uh, so I'm mad. I missed GU. I was too slow pulling the trigger. So that's 20 pips. I missed out on. So kudos to those who got that 20 pips. So, uh, we're, we're, that's what two and no, two and no now. Uh, this trade was not a bag entry trade. This was a break of agent session. So uh, this trade was called, but I couldn't get my, my trigger out there. And, and it had moved. It started really moving before I could even pull this up. So I didn't pull the trigger on that. Those who caught it, hey, good for you. Uh, but if you look at it, GU ran up real close to the, uh, the resistance zone. Uh, there's a reason why I say you need 20 pips of more room because resistance zones are just that, resistance zones. Uh, there are potential areas. Price is never going to always go back to that area. Sometimes it'll get close and turn around like it did right here. So GU had a nice pullback. I, if you guys saw me, I was looking at it. GA hasn't done anything yet. Uh, GJ was pulling back. You see it pull back. You see those long wicks at a time. GJ, GJ was pulling back. G, G, G uh, Chef, we were up 16 pips and then it came down hard. G CAD broke the edge of session and then came back below. And then GN, yeah, it's at a zone as well, right? The, the, the resistance zone. So when I see that, again, this is where the correlation comes in handy. When I see that certain pairs, uh, uh, the correlating pairs uh, that correlate with it uh, are pulling back together. Uh, are hitting levels of, of you know, and they're putting back at certain levels of resistance, whether it be at the level or slightly below it, that right there gives me uh, the indication that uh, the trend may be over uh, temporarily. Now it could continue to go up and G Chef could hit the 20 pip take profit. But for me, I'm not seeing that. Uh, you know, you see that doji, we talked about that doji, a doji uh, could be a potential um, you know, uh, the doji is a one of those candlestick formations uh, where the trend can uh, continue or it can, um, what do you call it? Or it can, you know, uh, reverse. If you see right here where this wick was at, if you notice here, look at this level we're at. This M, the M, the actual uh, neckline of the M is a natural level of resistance. I mean, of support. See where it stopped at? Look, price came up to it once, twice, three times before it broke that level, came back down, touched it, touched it, touched it, bounced off, came back to it, broke through it, tried to come back to it. This area has been touched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Now, nine times. This is a level of resistance. So when I saw that, and again, the longer you trade, the more from uh, your eye see it, I saw that they gave me the indication that price may be looking to reverse. So I took my profit, I ran. Price could break through and go hit 20 pips. But for me, I saw that. And then I also saw, as I just went through, GU got real close, turned around. Uh, GA, right at a level of resistance. That's GJ, right at a level of resistance. Now it's pulling back. So that's four GBP pairs that have hit a certain level of resistance and turning around. GCAD broke the agent session real strong and then came back down, or the agent channel. It broke the agent channel strongly. It was strong and then came back down. GN at a level of resistance. So when I see that, these all correlate, that gives me pause. It tells me, all right, Nate, take your money and run. That is why I closed my G ship trade out. And as you can see, for those who are still holding it, it's heading back down towards the level, uh, you know, our entry level. So again, if you're still holding this trade, again, it continues to go up. I'm just explaining to you guys why I closed that trade out. All right. 
So uh, we made money on G Chef, we made money on EG, Euro GDP, and uh, you guys uh, made money on GU. I missed that one. I'm a little upset about that, a little salty. Uh, but I'm gonna, uh, we're done for the night on the charts. What I'm gonna do is answer more questions because the Q&A is blown up. I wanna get these questions answered before the end of the night. All right, so somebody asked about the right risk management. So the right risk management is uh, I recommend using a 0 0.01 lot size for every $100, all right? For every $100 using a 0 0.01 lot size. So when you take a 20 pip trade with a 40 pip stop loss, you're risking 4% to make 2%, all right? Someone's asking about how do you know if a broker's A or B broker? Uh, a lot of you are jumping off right now. Hey guys, thank you guys. Hey, definitely, definitely get some rest. We've made some money tonight. Thank you guys for jumping on. Hopefully you guys learned something. So those jumping off, uh, thanks for jump, joining on with us. Uh, we'll be off another 23 minutes and then we'll be off. I wanna make sure I get all these questions answered. Uh, someone asked, you know, um, how do you know if it's an A broker or a B broker? Uh, so you can go and, and do your research on the website. Um, um, some will list it, some won't. Uh, you can also talk to others that may use the broker. Um, but you, know, you can look in the, into their, um, if you want to, you can also, you know, chat with the actual customer service reps and ask them as well. Someone asked if Euro GDP would qualify for strategy number eight. Your GBP. Yes, your GBP would have qualified for strategy number eight. Uh, actually, mm, let's look at that real quick here. So I'm gonna show you what I see here. We're we'll looking at your GBP for strategy number eight. All right, strategy number eight here. Uh, So we are in a downtrend, all right? Now, the reason why I wouldn't have drawn the fibs for strategy number eight is because it's green zone. You wanna have, like we talked about, what qualifies, you wanna have clear skies. So here's a pullback and then here's another pullback and there's nothing below it. So that, you know, you mark up your, your chart there with the fibs, uh, you don't wanna have anything showing. So like in a buy, let me go find a pair I told you guys I'd show you guys a buy as well. So let me show you guys a buy before we're done real quick. No, USD CAD is in downtrend. Mm. USD JPY, somewhat of an uptrend. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, yes, there we go. USD JPY is in the uptrend, all right. All right. So I'm assuming the pullback is here. All right. So, you know, which means that this is the previous pullback. You want red candles planted into a zone. And then the first candle, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's right here. This has been the next pullback. The next candle that closes below it is the next pullback. It doesn't have to be at the zone. All right, we know we're in an uptrend, so we know we're looking for a buy. 
So I would pull this out here, go from this here. Actually, let me, let me zoom in a little bit so we can get a better look at this here. All right, so we had pull back here, retrace here at the zone, into the zone. Price went up, came back down below. That's the retrace right there. It's below the moving average. It doesn't care what, doesn't matter what color it is. So now I go from the bottom to the top of the retrace. All right, it's real tight. Uh, and for me, I don't see, well, I do see a rejection, but I don't, it's, it's too, it, it's, it's false. So one of the three ways I'm gonna teach you guys is about um, uh, engulfing candles. So an engulfing candle, as you can see here, I hate when that happens. So this green, long green candle started at the same level as this mini green candle, but it engulfed it, which means it's longer. They started at the same level, but this candle is moving an uptrend. So it engulfed this candle, all right? Well, this one ran all the way up to the zero line. That's originally our original take profit. So for here, I wouldn't be looking to trade this. Like that, I'm not trading that. Now, you missed that trade, that's fine, Ain't no big deal. No big deal. Guess what? You got another opportunity. You got a pullback right here. Boom, pullback right there. All right, great. I got my pullback. Got my pullback, my retrace. So now I'm starting from down here. So this is the previous retrace. Current retrace, previous retrace. Set this up here. Boom, go up to the top like so. All right. And now I'm looking for a bounce. I mean, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a rejection. All right, I'm looking for a rejection. Uh, so I have a engulfing candle right here at the 62, all right, at the 62 level. So I'll be looking at taking the trade to the negative 62 level. Let's zoom out. As you can see, we made it all the way back. So my entry would be right here for the buy. All right. My stop loss would be five pips below the 79. So the 79 is at 102.902. .902. So then my stop loss would be at 102.850. Uh, Close online properties, 102.850. Oh, that's five pips below, boom. All right, and so if you look at the stop loss there, from our entry to our stop loss is 28 pips, 28.5, not even the 40. So. <clears throat> And you can see TP1 was at the zero line, 29 pips. So that's a one to one ratio, 28.5 stop loss, 29.9, or call it 30 pip take profit. And you can see we only really had four caught five pips retrace. It only went down five pips. So we only had drawdown five pips. All right. TP1 is at the negative 38. That's 56 pips, 28 pips stop loss, 56 take profit. That's a one to two ratio. Those who wanted the good ratio, here it is, TP3, 64. And then the final TP at the negative 62 is 72 pips. So we risk 28 to get 72. That's a one to 2.5, 2.6 ratio. It's good money. It's good money. That's it. That's how you catch it in the buy, all right? Uh, so Hugo's way is a B broker. That's why I'm moving from them. Uh, while we were on a little break, I, I messaged everybody back, um, uh, and let them know what, uh, I let them know that, um, you know, what the broker, I'm, you know, at least the broker I'm moving to or using now. So I, I reckon I went and said to everybody, uh, if you did not, uh, get a chance to ask that to me, 
You can DM me again at Nate Got the Bag on Instagram or on um, uh, on Instagram or on um, Telegram. So Hugo's Wake is a B broker. I have seen them manipulate trades, both manual trades and with the bot. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, trading with you guys live uh, next week uh, with a new broker. Actually, I'll probably be on them tomorrow. Um, if I can move everything, if I get a chance to move everything over today. Uh, if you missed it live, if you missed the trade live, then you just missed that. Someone asked me if I use trailing stop. I do not use a trailing stop. That's just me.
Yeah, uh, we got uh, the GCAD. People were talking about that. Uh, we're done for the day, so we're not taking any more trades. If you want to check that trade, go ahead. You know, it, it, it's a valid bag entry. Uh, but I, I explained why I was done trading, you know, the G pairs uh, and why I actually closed my G chef trade out early. So I went over that, guys. I went over that. Uh, doesn't mean it won't pan out. Uh, it just means that I'm I'm not looking to take those trades. So G cat. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done trading at the moment. You were asking about the trading challenge, FTMO. So FTMO is a, is a company. Uh, there's multiple out there that have um, uh, what's called funded accounts. So if you can pass uh, their verification process, you can, uh, and they have very strict policies, but you can uh, then turn around and receive a 10000 25000 50000 up to $100,000 live account to trade on. Uh, and then if you are successful in trading every month, uh, depending on which company you go with, FTMO has a policy, I believe, of 70-30 split. So if you make $10,000 profit for the month on a $100,000 account, you get to keep $7,000 and they keep $3,000. Uh, so it's just a way you know, you know, to be able to, if you are good at trading and you have small amounts of money to trade, uh, but you're very precise, you can actually apply uh, for their programs, get approved, and then be able to trade with a bigger account and be able to make the type of money you would like to make. So um, I'll talk more about this probably you know, today and tomorrow. And then like I said, we'll get started. I mean, I'll talk about it in the group. I'm gonna get started with the practice account next week. I'm going live with the real verification count next month, but I'm gonna do the practice challenge you know, for the rest of this month, uh, just to get uh, used to how their broker works uh, and utilizing strategy number you know, eight and number one. All right, those are the two strategies that I'll be utilizing. Uh, right now, uh, pairs for the rest of the night. I I don't know. I haven't looked. At, I haven't looked at them. I can tell you right now the I don't like G pairs right now. They're all at a level of resistance, so I'm not liking that. Uh, Euro pairs, they're starting to range now. Uh, and so we may not see a little breakout for a while. Uh, so uh, yes, there's gonna be a live trading call in the morning in New York session. Dante will be on live at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, U.S. Tech. I'm getting. Uh, we're not gonna look at that. We're done for the day on on, on looking at pairs, guys. We, you know, I said three trades today. Uh, I caught two. Some 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 of the guys got three. Hey, we got some tips tonight. Some people even held held that Euro GP trade and caught the full twenty. So great job there.
So uh, you can contact me on Instagram. You can contact me on uh, Telegram. Uh, if you can't find me on any of those, my name is Nathan J. Williams on Facebook. Uh, so you can send me a message there. All right. We answered all the questions in the Q&A box like everybody's getting off the call. Hey, I appreciate you guys uh, joining us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, so uh, New York sessions, hopefully it's popping in the morning. Uh, so look at that. Wait up for uh, Dante. He'll be up in the morning. Uh, so shout out to Calvin, man, that we, you know, we, we made money with his baby, that G Chef. All right, God, hey, thank you guys. Thank you guys for believing in us, supporting us. And we'll be back. It's only going to get better from here, guys. Only going to get better. All right. More educating, longer trade sessions. Uh, it's only going to get better. I'll be on in for the next three minutes, two minutes now. Anybody got any questions? That's fine. Just put them in the Q&A box. I'll be on for the two minutes. Uh, for those who want to know where Dante's link is, it'll be posted in the group. We typically post it, you know, 10, 15 minutes before the call. So it'll be in the group, in the group chats. Also it'll be in the uh, Arrow announcements channel as well. Eight a.m. in the morning, guys, for the call. Eight a.m. If you made some money, guys, post it on social media, Instagram, Facebook, tag me in it. Hey, let's, let's show the world what we're doing out here, guys. So to get access to all the strategies, yes, you have to have access to Arrow. Uh, so make sure you get access to Arrow. That way you can access to uh, all the strategies. If you don't have access to Arrow, uh, you know, update, upgrade your access pass so that you can actually collect uh, and start having uh, access to Arrow as well. All right, guys, hey, 3 o'clock, 3 a.m. It's been a pleasure, guys. Glad we can get some trades in tonight. Uh, let's see if we can't do the same thing tomorrow. Uh, see you guys in the funny paper. Mm -hmm.